Okay, I had this great plan. I was going to film three videos while making one video. I was going to do the 3 2 one method for ribs. I was going to do, does that side pot warmer on the Oklahoma Joe's Highland actually work? And I was going to do using rib trimmings to up your game on your barbecued beans. Scrap that. All three are going to be in one super video. Hi everybody, and thanks for stopping by. Okay, you're here for this super video. Okay, let's hold there for a second. I just wanna let you know, this is gonna be a fairly detailed video, especially when it comes to getting things ready, your fire, your cooker, things like that. I'm gonna go into quite a bit of detail on how I do it. Doesn't mean you have to do it that way, but I wanna give you a really good example of what I do to get ready to smoke ribs. Then we'll get into actually smoking the ribs. So enjoy. First thing I gotta do is I've gotta get two fires lit. One in the Oklahoma Joe's Highland and the other in my Weber kettle. I'm gonna be doing the rib trimmings on the Weber kettle indirect and I'm gonna be doing the ribs on the Oklahoma Joe's Highland. Okay, this is charcoal for my Oklahoma Joe's Highland offset that's getting started. Now I've gotta get the charcoal in the Weber kettle going. So I'm setting up the Weber kettle for indirect and I'm going to be using this for the rib trimmings. And I'm also going to be reusing some charcoal in here that still has some life left in it. I'm a big believer in that. You don't always burn out your charcoal completely. Sometimes you need dead fresh. I've got a couple fresh pieces in there. But I'm going to be starting this today with my favorite method for lighting charcoal, even though it's not always the most practical. I'm going to be using the torch. I also have a couple pieces of old hickory on there. I'll be adding fresh hickory later. Just need to get this charcoal started. It'll do the rest of the work here. Just need to get a few pieces going. For those of you wondering how long the blue cylinder lasts, um, I've used this so far for about 20 to 25 cooks, starting charcoal for that. It's still going strong. Um, you can also use just those green camping propane cylinders for it. This is just propane. All right, we're gonna let that charcoal catch fully. Once that's done, we'll put the lid on, build up to temp, and we'll get our rib trimmings on there. I don't know if you can see this, but I have these two Weber accessories, which are used for dividing up coal for an indirect um, cook. You can put them on either side. I also use them just like this to help sort of divide the kettle and keep the coals further to one side. It's just sort of a makeshift uh, uh, use of them, but it seems to work well. To smoke these ribs today, I'm gonna to be using hickory, which I've cut my uh, sticks in half, my quarter round sticks in half. Uh, the, the sticks I get are usually about 16 to 20 inches long. Um, I like cutting them in half, partly because the firebox on the Oklahoma Joe's Highland isn't huge. It's not as you know big as a Yoder or a Lang or something like that. So I find that cutting these sticks in half uh, allows you to put it in there and control it a little better rather than just trying to always jam a huge stick in there. And if you notice the bark pieces on top there, um, I know some people don't like to cook with bark. Generally, if the bark's on there, I don't mind if it comes off. I use it to help get the fire going at the beginning. Um, I haven't noticed any difference uh, when there's bark on there. Uh, if it falls off and I don't like the looks of it, I'll just throw it away uh, or just use it for in the fire pit but generally I just keep it to help get the fire going. Sun's coming out, a little bit of blue sky. It's gonna be a nice day, not hot. You can see that in there, I have my three little mini water pans and those are filled with water, almost full. One of them's a little under full. I like using these size water pans in here because they don't take up a lot of real estate. I've mentioned that before in another video and I can position them at different places in the cook chamber. I generally like to keep two on the firebox side, the hottest side of the chamber. And again, this is just to help keep moisture in there to keep the, the meat um, from drying out. Um, ribs especially, I mean, I'll be spritzing them with apple juice, but they, ribs like moisture in there. You wanna keep them moist. The charcoal in the Weber kettles, glowing nice and red down in there already. Looking good. We'll probably have to add charcoal as the day goes along, along with some hickory chunks. 
uh, but that's what this is. These are going to be probably going um, indirect for about four hours, which is at least two hours shorter than the spare ribs I'm going to be doing. But they're going to be taken off uh, these trimmings at the end, and I'm going to cut them up and put them in with some barbecue beans. You can see our kettle temp is coming up. We're already to 500 degrees. We're going to dial that back uh, by bringing the vents down a little bit. Uh, we're not going to want it cooking that hot. Uh, I'm also going to let this coal burn down a little bit. Then I can add individual briquettes and ones and twos uh, to keep the fire going and the temperature up. So just a real quick note here uh, about the firebox and how I'm going to be setting it up and how I usually run it. Uh, you can see my little ash can down there to pull ash out, uh, which will probably happen during a long cook. I mean, this is going to be about a six-hour cook uh, for these ribs. The damper, I will prop open with my little MacGyver hook there. Um, I know people say you can just tighten this and it'll stay better. I've tightened it. It just doesn't want to stay well. So this is a simple solution for me. The other thing is, I generally leave this door open like this, uh, especially when the fire is just starting. Well, sometimes also just leave the lid fully open for a while until we have a good fire going uh, on the sticks. Once the fire is going, I'll even go a step further. I'll put this old pair of tongs under the door to get some more airflow in here just to make sure everything's going well. I want a good fire in there. Once everything's going good, I can close this lid. I can even shut the door if I need to. If I'm still having difficulties, I'll leave the door open and use my little assist fan, which I've shown you before. Also, when I'm getting a fire going in the firebox for the Oklahoma Joe's Highland, I always like to have a few chunks of really dry wood. Uh, this is some dry hickory right here. These aren't big sticks. These are smaller chunks, which will catch very easily if I need to. Again, these are just to help it along if, for whatever reason, that piece of wood isn't going, or you're having difficulty, a lot of humidity that day. There's a lot of things that can affect your fire. I just like to have these on hand in case. I'm going to open my smokestack all the way. Internal temp probe for the pit. All right, we're reading 70 degrees, which is about what it is outside. As I've mentioned before, I'm a big believer in recycling charcoal that hasn't had its usefulness completely taken out of it. This was smothered on a previous cook. There's still some good time in it. A couple chunks of, uh, I think that's still hickory in there. We're going to let this help us along today. Okay, if you can see that there, we have very hot coals about two or three levels down. This is about where I want to go. Okay, now I'm going to add some of my bark pieces in there. And we'll let these catch, then we'll get a stick on there. Our bark pieces are going good. We're going to get a stick on there now. Let that catch and then we will bring the door down with the tongs underneath it. Okay, so we have a good fire going here. We're gonna bring our lid down with our tongs underneath. That'll allow us to still have good airflow as this fire starts to build and catch this initial fire. I just love the look of that smoke starting to come out of the smokestack. It's sort of calming. I don't know if you can hear everything. I've got an airplane going overhead traffic 50 feet away from me and I think they're mowing the median out on the boulevard you know <laughs> about 50 feet from my back wall so I've got mowers airplanes cars trucks I don't know there's like smoker therapy this just calms me I love this and while it's coming up to temp I need to go get the ribs ready so what I have here are some spare ribs which I've trimmed down to basically St. Louis cuts and I'm going to be putting on my brown sugar chipotle rub, which is heavy on the brown sugar. It's got enough chipotle powder in it to give it a little kick, but not too much. And that mellows out as you're smoking. Let's get these rubbed up here. You notice these were full racks. I've got three of them, actually, that I've cut in half, so six half racks. I just find that the half racks, I got used to doing that with my electric smoker, which wouldn't hold a full rack. And on the Oklahoma Joe's Highland, I found if you're doing more than two full racks, you can actually fit them better by cutting them in half to begin with. I removed most of the membrane on this. I always miss some, but I haven't had any complaints yet. There have actually been times where I've left the membrane on too. No one complained then either, but I do like taking the membrane off. 
I'm not going for a really heavy coating of rub right here because during the 3 2 one method, I'll explain that a little bit more later if you're not familiar with it. During that two stage of it, we're going to be adding more brown sugar and some more liquid when we wrap these in foil. Like I said, I'll go through that a little bit later. Okay, four more half racks to go and I'll be ready. Okay, so here are all the rib trimmings. Now, I know some of you out there that may be butchers or more skilled in trimming ribs are looking at this going, what did you do? Well, you're, you're right, I'm not a butcher and I'm not really great at trimming things, uh, but I wanted to get these down to really edible, like I said, St. Louis-y type ribs. Um, so you're cutting off big chunks with the bone, the chine bone, everything up here. I think it's called the chine bone. Big old hunks, but there's a lot of good meat left in here. And this is what we're going to be putting on the Weber to get that meat cooked so we can get it into our barbecue beans. So I'm just going to use the rest of my rub on this and just kind of douse it. We're just going to shake it on everything and rub these up as best we can. We won't be saucing these at all because they're going to be going into beans that are going to have barbecue sauce. Whereas at the end of our cook for the actual ribs, we will be saucing them during the one time of the 3 2 one method. All these pieces. And some of these are going to cook quicker than others, and that's all right because, like I said, it's going to be cut up and it's going to be cooked after about the four hour mark. We'll take it off and we'll pull as much meat off as we can. We're going to lose some, I know. Again, if you're a butcher out there looking at these, please don't laugh at me. I'm doing the best I can. A lot of good meat in there. All right. I think it's time to get these on the Weber kettle. Okay, so our temp on the Weber kettle is moderated down from 500 degrees. We're at about 300 degrees, and that's going to drop even further. So I want to, again, want to keep it between, you know, 225, 250 on the kettle here. I don't mind if it gets up to about 300, but I want to try and keep it 300 or under while I'm doing these rib trimmings. You can see I've got the vent dialed down to about quarter on the top vent, bottom vents all the way open. Get this lid off here. I'm going to add two briquettes and two pieces of hickory. Helps getting our smoke going in there. Start getting our big old rib chunks on here. Again, I'm going to put the biggest, thickest ones closest to the fire and the ones that aren't that thick away. And we're going to be cramming in here. There's a lot of stuff to fit in this space. That is a full house. Okay, let's put the lid back on, get it back to temp, and let it start cooking. Okay, our pit temp's at 269. That's going to moderate a little bit. I want to try and keep it between 225 and 250, but I always find it's better to have that pit temp higher before you put the meat in because it's going to drop uh, precipitously. It's going to get way down there. So let's get these ribs on. I'm going to put my big pieces closer to the firebox end. It's a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle. As you can see, just by opening the door, putting the stuff in there, we've lost over 80 degrees of temperature, roughly 80 degrees of temperature. So let's get this closed up and start building temp again. Let's get this closed up and start cooking. So the 3 2, one method, what is it? Well, a lot of you out there, I'm sure, already know. This is for those of you who aren't familiar with it. 3 2, one stands for three hours naked on the grill with smoke, two hours wrapped in foil with some sort of moisture in there, and one hour at the end, again, naked on the grill with Smoke if you want, or sauce, whatever you want to do it. Now the 3 2, one method works well with uh, spare ribs and St. Louis. Uh, I find that sometimes the spare ribs need to go a little bit longer at the one part of this. Uh, 
baby backs sometimes only need about five, five and a half hours. So you might end up doing a three, one, one or a two, two, one. You have to play with it and see what works best for you. The key here is remembering that that end number, the one, it's just a guide. The ultimate test of whether your ribs are done is tenderness. Are they pulling away from the bone? Are they bending when you lift the racks up? Do they bend? I've said before that I don't like my ribs to be falling off the bone tender. I like a little bit of bite. So that last little bit of time lets you get the ribs to just the tenderness you like. Pit temp is holding around 243. That's good. It's going to come down a little bit more once we start burning that stick down. We're going to be running between 225 and 250 most of the day. We have a nice volume of good clean smoke coming out now. Every once in a while you're going to get a puff there that doesn't look like, you know, oh it's thin, not thin blue smoke anymore. You know the thin blue smoke thing? It's helpful. You know, you don't want super dirty smoke coming out. But it's not always going to be like that. It's not always going to be translucent. And on camera here I can tell you this has a little bit of, you know, thickness to it. It's not perfectly, you know, thin blue but it's close enough and you are getting good smoke in the chamber. And with that volume of smoke coming out, um, you're actually building up that smoke pressure in the chamber, which helps it penetrate into the meat. This may be a little difficult to see. This is the drain spout on the bottom of the Oklahoma Joe's Highland. You can see the bucket hanging there, but there's actually smoke coming out of that. Now that's always to me a good indicator that you have a good volume of smoke in your chamber if it's coming out the drain hole. You want that smoke to stay in there. You want it to fill there to help penetrate the meat. As long as it's clean smoke, you don't want the filthy smoke, you know, but it's, you're, you're going to get some burn in there, but you want that smoke pressure. So I don't know if you can see it. It's hard maybe on the camera, but I can see it plainly here. There's smoke, you know, just drifting out of there, which is good. Just a quick check here, see how our wood is doing. Sometimes I like to turn it. And, you know, I think we're going to add another piece now. We're going to give that just a minute to help catch a little bit, but we already have one piece going really well in there. Now we're going to close this up again. Our pit temp's holding at about 250-ish, 252 right now, uh, right on the upper side of what I want, 225, 250. Can I want to give you an example of why it's important to keep moisture in your cooking chamber. That pan, one of the ones closest to my firebox, which was almost full, is now empty boiled away. So if you're pushing that much moisture out of a pan that's full of water, you can also push the moisture out of your food. That's why you want to help keep moisture in the chamber. So I'm going to have to add water to that pan. I'll top off the others at the same time. Let's close this up now and build back up to temp. Okay, while well I'm out here, I'm going to check the Fire, we're looking good. I think we're gonna add another piece right now so we don't go completely down. Give that a second to start catching, but we definitely have a good fire going. Probably in a couple hours, I think we're gonna have to pull some ash out of the bottom of this. That's not a problem. Let's close this up. Let's see how our Rib trimmings are coming. The rib trimmings look good. I don't think we need to add anything more to these. I'm going to open the top here, to give it a little more airflow. All right, coming outside here to check on things, and the kettle is holding at about 275, which is actually really good. Uh, not too hot. I'm trying to keep it under 300, so happy with that so far. May have to add some more charcoal later, but for right now, we're about two hours into the cook. Holding well. It's time to spritz these ribs again. Oh, you hear that sizzle? They're looking good. Yep, two hours in. These are just looking really good already. Just gotta keep them nice and moist. Let's close this up and keep them cooking. Give our fire a look, see how it's doing. Mm -hmm. oh, time for another piece. And I'll let that piece catch. And close it up again. Looking good. 
Got good smoke still. A little bit breezy today. Not too bad. Okay, with this bright sun, I don't know if you can see that down there, but I've added another stick to the firebox and some more charcoal because just getting ready in about 15 minutes to move into the two phase of the 321 method. So I want to make sure I have a good heat going there. Smoke is not as important in this second phase um, because it's heat. You're going to be wrapped up in foil. And I've got my wrapping station set up with uh, six pieces of heavy duty foil already laid out so I can wrap my ribs up quickly as I take them off. All right, time to take our ribs off and wrap them for the two portion of the 321 method for two hours. Oh, those look good. Let's just look at those for a minute. Okay, I'm gonna start pulling these off one at a time, wrap them and get them back on. Gonna get some brown sugar on here. It's just gonna sort of melt around there. Get some more liquid. Be generous with the liquid. There's different kinds of liquids you can use. I like apple juice. And I'm gonna wrap this up good. I want to keep bone side down so I have this fold on top. I always keep my ribs bone side down when I'm smoking them. I don't roll them over to the meat side on top. I like to keep it this way. So this is going back on the smoker. And now we just repeat the process five more times. There are six half racks of St. Louis Cut Spare Ribs wrapped up, ready for two hours in foil with brown sugar and apple juice. Uh, this will help tenderize them even further, keep them very moist. Let's close this up. We've got to build that temp back up. While we're out here, let's see how our rib trimmings are doing. Temp's a little high. It's over 300, about 350 right now. So I'm going to bring this back down. So check. Oh, looking good. Nice. We've got about an hour more to go before we cut them off, chop up the meat, and get it into our beans, which we are soon going to start testing on the Oklahoma Joe's Highland Offset Firebox Pot Warmer. Okay, so as part of Super Video, <laughs> I said I wanted to test and see if the pot warmer, this little part here on the firebox of the Oklahoma Joe's Highland, and they're on the other offset smokers I've seen too, does that actually really work? Could you actually use that to, you know, actually heat something like beans up enough to where you can eat them? Not just keep them warm, but actually cook them there, get them hot enough. And I'm gonna test that today. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do using my infrared thermometer here is see what is the temperature of the pot warmer. And I'm getting about 430-ish degrees, not too bad. Okay, if you have a pot sitting on there, that will come up to temp. But how long will it take? Well, in a little while, I'm going to test that with an entire can of barbecued baked beans. That's what we're going to use when we add our rib trimmings in. We're going to be cooking it on here on the pot warmer. See how it does. All right. Beans going into the pot. This is to test the side pot warmer on the Oklahoma Joe's Highland. See how it does. See if you can see that. Showing about 460-ish degrees right there. But one way I want to be a little bit more accurate is I'm going to put temp probe in here. Now, it's not going to be perfect, but should give us a little bit of a sense if we're going to get up to a temperature which works for actually eating beans. Okay, so the temperature probe in the beans, 158 and rising. 
not bad. I'm gonna give it some time there to cook because in just a few minutes, I need to get the ribs off the Highland, unwrap them and sauce them. Let's take a look in here because I just saw something when I added some barbecue sauce. Can you see that? It's bubbling. Well, what do you know? It works. <laughs> it works. I can take the probe out now. All right. Time to start removing our ribs from the foil. We're going to move from the two in the three to one method to the one. get this opened up. Now I won't sauce this right here. I'm going to sauce it once it's back on the smoker. Let's take a look at this. Looking good. As you can see, meat's pulling away from the bones. It's not done yet. Still not bendy enough. It's hard to see when it's not a full rack, but it still has a little bit of tension to it. We want to give it some more time on the smoker so this next hour with sauce is going to help bring it right to the end and these are spare ribs remember so it might take a little longer than that hour so i'm going to get this back on the smoker ribs are all on there ready to be sauced I'm going to be using a hatch chili barbecue sauce that picked up at sprouts market to coat these ribs for this last hour these just really smell wonderful this is the one thing that YouTube, television, everything's missing is that scent. I know I always say that when I'm making the videos and saucing stuff or seeing how it looks, but man, it is just awesome. I think I mentioned in an earlier part of this video about smoker therapy, you know, how it's relaxing. Well, this isn't far off, being able to look at the food you've made, smell it, put sauce on it. All right, that looks pretty good. These just look phenomenal, smell phenomenal. I'm pretty sure they're gonna taste phenomenal too. Time to get this closed up for this last hour. It is time to get our rib pieces off. Now, obviously not every single piece is gonna go into the beans, but some of them are. The rest I'm going to save and freeze unless someone decides to eat some of them tonight. So I'm going to start cutting up some of these. Let's get some of these pieces off here. Again, they're not going to be as tender as the ribs coming off the smoker because they haven't been on as long and under different conditions. Get the best parts into the beans. Nice hearty barbecued beans with rib pieces. Ooh, it's a little toasty on the fingers. Yes, I know I should have brought my grill gloves out. I'm gonna get these into the beans. Can you hear the sirens? No, I didn't set anything on fire. Let's get these stirred in. All right, let's let that keep cooking. The wind's picked up a little bit, but we've still got good smoke as the cook winds down. And our pit temp with, you know, about 40 minutes until six hours is 225226. We're doing great. It's been a very smooth cook so far. Let's give our beans another check on the pot warmer here. I gotta say, I did not expect this thing to do as well as it does, but I mean, it makes sense. It's right over the firebox, but it's got a little gap over most of it in airspace, but it transmits enough heat to do this and get a boil going. So the ribs are just about done. Beans are definitely done. I am going to get a taste of these right now. It's a big piece of rib meat. Mmm. Oh, I like that bite of rib meat. These are just, I can't remember what they were, the Bush's baked beans or something. Some barbecue sauce added and rib trimmings that have been smoked. Mm. Gotta say, that pot warmer on the side of the Highland, it works. Works really well. I had to take the pot off 
near the end because it was too hot. Success with the beans. Ribs will be done soon. So our time is just about up. Let's check for tenderness here. Ooh. Whoa. Look at that. All right, let's see. That meat is dead. Okay. Yeah. I can <laughs> you see that? They're ready to fall apart. Yep. Look at this one right here as I pick it up. That piece is breaking away. This is perfect. It is time to taste these. Look at that. Now I get to cut into this. Didn't bring my grill gloves out, but I brought blue gloves. Oh, so tender. Wow, look at that. This one is a little too done for me, but I know some people just love this, but oh man, I'm still gonna eat it. Now this was one of the ones that was closest to the firebox, so it is gonna be cooked a little more. It's also one of the bigger ones. All right, I'll pick it up and eat it. I am absolutely 100% ready to taste this. Oh. Okay, it's hard to see with this piece falling apart, but there is a just wonderful smoke ring on this. I don't know if you can see that. Oh. Let's go. Oh my God. Oh wow. I'm just gonna taste a piece of meat that fell off. Mmm. That sweetness of adding that brown sugar during the two phase of the three, two, one. Mm. I'm gonna just eat a whole rib before anyone else gets here. By the way, I was cooking this for other people, not just me tonight. Mm. So I hope you enjoyed this super video. I know it's long, a lot of detail, but I wanted to give a lot of detail. If you enjoyed it, consider giving a like down below. It sure does help. And if you wanna see more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're interested in any of the items that I used in this video, I'll link them down below. You can check them out in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great evening, and I'll see you again soon. I'm going to eat some more ribs right now. Look at that. Okay, falling off the bone isn't bad sometimes.